in the early 90s, I, uh, I acquired a little favela soprano. And at that time, my grandmother entered a place called Colonial Manor, Manor Nursing Home. I went over there to entertain her and, uh, and the other residents. And uh, um, at that time, I was doing really just what I knew and being a mandolin and a guitar player and playing with a flat pick. That's pretty much all I knew. I didn't know any other way. There were no other ukulele players around in Milwaukee. And uh, learned a couple of tunes by the light of the silvery moon. And, I can't give you anything but love, baby, and a few others. And I, I, I strummed away for an hour on a few different instruments. And when I got done, a little lady came up to me and she said, I used to play ukulele on the banks of the Hudson River when I was a little girl. And, uh, um, and she said what I initially took to be a um, criticism when she said, but we didn't play with a flat pick. <laughs> And then I handed her the uke and I said, how did you play? And at first she, you know, was reluctant, but finally she put it in her hands and, uh, and, and within a few minutes she was playing five foot two and eyes of blue with her fingers. And I kept hearing these fascinating sounds. I was hearing, and I was hearing, and all kinds of cool little things, or at least semblances thereof. And, uh, and then she handed it back to me. And, and, and from that day on, I determined that I wasn't going to play ukulele with a pick, but I had already worn the top off the old favela, almost like Willie Nelson's guitar. I had to take it to a luthier and have a pick guard put over that hole. Um, many, many years went by and hundreds of ukulele students came to ask me, Little Rev, what do you think of a pick? Do you ever play with a pick? And I would say, it's sacrilegious. <laughs> I never play with a pick. Then one day I was at the Gorge Ukulele Festival in Hood River, Oregon, and one of my dear friends and someone I revere uh, totally got up on stage and what did he have in his hand? A flat pick. And I figured if James Hill could get away with it, so I <laughs> So I'm gonna play a tune from Earl McDonald's uh, Louisville Jug Band from the mid 20s. This is an old time blues with good help tonight. And uh, um, where I come from we say, one of the finest bass players in Michigan, way above union scale, Mr. Frank Youngman. <laughs> and over here from St. Louis, but we forgive him for that, <laughs> Mr. Sandy Weldman.
Gotta love that harmonica. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I, uh, I fell in love with, with harmonica, was the rhythmic side of it. Growing up hearing uh, grandfather play everything from the Red River Valley to When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. I knew the harmonica was a melodic tour de force, but rhythmically, uh, when I discovered a fellow named Sonny Terry, that's when it all changed for me. And, and ever since then, I've been trying to uh, um, live in his shadow a little bit and soak up some of what he left us. And so, uh, this is a piece that I call Whoopin' Johnny, and it's a tribute to Sonny Terry. Uh, some years ago, and New Orleans is one of those towns where the, really, the magic really happens late at night. And most of the musicians and mimes and uh, caricature artists have all long since left Jackson Square. And full moon descends upon the town on, in the Crescent City, the Big Easy. And there you are, and uh, you're not expecting to hear anybody out in the street that late at night and then in the shadows of some doorway you discover some lone musician sitting there picking on their guitar and you stop for what you think is going to be but a moment and it turns into a half hour or 45 minutes and there you are hearing some great old songs wondering where they come from. They get in your ear and they never leave. Such was the case with this tune which I later rediscovered in Alan Lomax's Folk Songs of North America. Brought him home in a hurry. 
hurry away this morning. Brought him home in a hurry away this evening. Brought him home in a hurry away. Paul Dan Bill, his toes were dragging this morning. This evening so soon So this morning, oh no, can't be so this evening, oh no, can't be so. I saw Bill an hour ago this morning, this evening, so soon. Thank you. I'm going to do one last little short little tune here and, and then my, my time is up. My, uh, my wife is always embarrassed when we go into the hardware store because I never, I'm, I always forget what I'm supposed to be there for and I start, I start trying to blow my harmonica through anything that has two ends. <laughs> See if I can get a cool sound that nobody else has discovered before. So I played through tin cans and all kinds of cool stuff, and I just love this. It's just, it's really my fascination. And uh, in the summertime, we live in the backyard, and really for me, the closest place to heaven is my wife, our two dogs, and my little girl, and a little bonfire in the backyard. And in the summer, it doesn't get any better than that. It's really about as good as it gets. And uh, once in a while, I'll sit back there and just pick some tunes, and the other couple nights ago, we had our little kerosene lamp um, burning in the backyard, you know, and so we could find our way to the back door and whatnot, and, and it occurred to me that uh, it had two ends. <laughs> and, uh, so I'll make this kind of short here, and uh, I'll save the embellishments for another time so I can make way for the next act, but I'll give you a little bit of uh, what this sounds like here. Bill Tapia said something to me that has influenced almost every instrument I play. Um, he said, a little Rev, I like when people don't play all the notes that they can. <laughs> he said, I, I, I like to just play as few notes as possible, as close to the melody as I can, and then only when I have to do I play around the melody and embellish it a little bit. He said, uh, if we're too busy playing too many notes, it, we might as well just practice scales. And so sometimes it's fun to just stick as close to the melody as you can.
She lays eggs for the railroad man. Sometime one, sometime two. Sometime enough for the whole darn crew. Cluck old hand, cluck and sing. Ain't let an egg since way last spring. Cluck old hand, cluck and squall. Ain't let an egg since way last fall. I had a hand, she had a wooden leg, best on hand that ever laid an egg, laid more eggs than any hen around, I reckon another drink wouldn't do me no harm, cluck old hand, cluck and sing, ain't laid an egg since way last spring, cluck old hand, cluck and squall, ain't laid an egg since way last fall. Thank you, everybody.